Hey guys, Jaffo here with our next part in our How to Get Started with Miniatures series. Um, if you remember, if you've been watching all along, if you remember last week we painted up Kawasha here um, from the Tomb of Annihilation board game. That leaves us three miniatures, and as you can see, he's already on my painting table or painting uh, handle. We are going to go with the Orc today, the Orc Warrior. So now that he's primed up, here is the guy that we're going to use. And I thought I would do something a little more non-traditional. And mostly because I am a Warhammer 40k player and I play orcs. And I paint way too much green the way it is. So, and you can see stuff commissions in the background there for those of you who are still too unmotivated or lacking time to paint. You can always contact me. Link is in the description down below. So, anyway, now that shameless self-promotion is done, I thought I would try something a little non-traditional here. So, you see some blues, and blues on an orc just to seem weird, don't they? Well, we're going to try it out. So, we're going to try a, a blue skin tone. We're going to start with a Kalidor Sky. We're going to darken that up with uh, a blue shade called Drakenhof Nightshade. Then we're going to hit it with a highlight of Teclas Blue. And then we're going to do uh, the super high spots on him in Lothern Blue. So that'll, that'll cover up his uh, uh, all of his skin tone. Um, XV88, you know, we'll use that for uh, uh, any leathers that we got. Lead Belcher, I'm going to use that on this model for uh, the chain mail underneath his uh body plate here you know and i just realized he's got he's got like fur underneath that so i'm gonna have to get some fur colors <coughs> um let's see fur colors fur colors fur colors yeah, i'll figure it out while we're going let's not stop and pause after that lead belcher We'll hit it with Null Oil. Probably brighten it up just a little bit with some Iron Breaker. And that'll also go on his sword. Um, and then I was thinking, thinking, that's probably a bad idea, for his uh, stomach plate and his pauldrons and possibly even his shield, we could do a variation of copper. And we'll start with, uh, as I drop my camera, We'll start with dropping the camera, so make sure when you're filming you drop your camera. We'll start with Warplock Bronze, we'll hit that with some Agrax Earthshade, and then we'll brighten that up with a two-piece of Brass Scorpion and Rune Lord Brass. So, let us see here, where should we start with this guy? Well, let's start with the skin first so we can cry right away and get that out of the way. Make sure you give your paint pots a good shake. Crack that open. Get yourself a good scoop onto your palette. It's probably way more than we need, but for me, it's always better to have more than not enough. At least in my opinion. Get your brush clean, dips in water. Get yourself a good layer brush. I've got, I'm using a medium layer brush today. Um, a small would also work. And you may need to switch to a small depending on your details. And we're just going to paint in his skin tone. So here and here. Pretty much anywhere you see exposed flesh. So there and there and there, uh, his knees and his legs are pretty well covered. So I will clean that all up and I'll be right back to show you what that looks like. There we go. We now have the start of a blue orc. I know those are like foreign terms to just about everybody out there watching, but you know what? It's going to be a thing, man. It's going to be a thing. Um, so we're going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade right away. Give that a good shake. 
and we're just going to paint that on pretty much everywhere that you've turned it blue. Again, be very careful with your inks as they can kind of get everywhere. And you're just looking to give every part of your model a good uh, bit of coverage of this because this is going to darken down this very happy blue and make it a little bit more of a, let's call it a sad blue. Um, I, I am no Bob Ross, but, uh, you know, Bob Ross always, always painted and told people that there is no, uh, there is no accident or ha every accident is a happy accident and just learn to turn it into your favor. He wasn't talking about miniature painting. That, that's for sure. Um, when you're painting on a giant canvas like that, it's really easy to fix a mistake. When you're painting on a small little miniature like this, um, and people are going to be looking at it and focusing on specific details. Trust me, happy accidents don't exist. Happy accidents for us is when you decide, I want my orc to be blue. And you paint them, and you're like, holy shit, that's really awesome looking. I'm going to do an entire army of blue. Until you do an entire army of blue, and you're like, oh my god, what the hell did I just do? But that's neither here nor there. Um, so you just want to make sure you get a nice, even coverage. See, look, I can distract you guys while I paint. Isn't that what I should do? Story time. Talk to you guys some more. Show you what I do. Make sure, and if you ever get too much on there, clean your brush off. And with a dry, damp brush, just kind of go in and pick up any of the spots that are pooling. You can kind of push that around and maybe move it so that it's in a different spot. So there you go. Kind of got to hide the sun a little bit. So there we go. That's what we got there. Um, I did decide on a color for my uh, fur. We're going to use some Steel Legion Drab and we'll ink that. Um, so that's there. I think the next color that we want to do is we want to actually, yeah, actually let's do the undershirt. So we'll do the uh, lead belcher. As I go and I get that ready on my palette real quick. We'll get our lead belcher ready. And then this, we're going to use on the chain mail that is all over the front and back. We'll do the sword, his like cleaver looking thing, and then of course all on the back. And if you did what I did and made a slight boo-boo as it were on your, uh, your blue bleeding over into that, just make sure you get a nice even coverage of uh, your chain mail color. So I'm going to clean that all up and I'll be right back and show you what that looks like when it's done. There we go. We now have all of our lead belcher applied and that's given all of our silver a uh, good sheen. The next color that I'm going to switch to is actually my XV88, which we know, you know, we always use as a leather. Um, and that's because I want to hit that also with the uh, Null Oil before we use it, or before we uh, ink. So I'm going to put leather here. And then he's got a big belt that holds on his uh, bronze uh, backing. If you look down here, he's also got two leather straps here that I'm going to do. And... We're going to actually create a leather strap, I think right there, no, maybe, I don't know. This is what happens when you get, you know, some of these cheaper models is the details where you want them to be just aren't there. But I think we're going to create detail. So we're going to put a strap there. And then we'll put a strap, like, right about there. 
But now with that, you're going to have to be much more careful because any color that you put around there, you want to make sure that it blends properly. So we're going to put the strapping there. And I'll tidy that all up. I'll be right back and show you what it looks like. There we go. We now have our leather applied. As you can see, I put it on the straps on his wrist. We did the strap around the waist. As you can see, we did the two straps on the legs here. We created a strap. We're going to have to work real careful there to make sure that that stays. And then I also uh, decided that it's, that's what's holding up the front and back of his chain mail. Um, I have found a couple other colors I want to use before I want to put the black ink on it, the null oil. So the next one that I'm going to use is our Steel Legion Drab. And also while I'm working, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. And I'm just going to use that for the wood on the shield right here. Uh, as for the Steel Legion Drab, that we're going to do for all of the uh, pelt here. So his under pelt. And then, if you want to get really fancy, you don't have to. But if we're playing the paint by numbers game here, we're going to actually try and have him wearing like uh, uh, almost like a beaver pelt, or not beaver, but you know, an, an animal skin as like almost like a sock and then he's got metal greaves or metal metal boots just chunks of metal stuck to him so i think that'll kind of give us some really nice contrast on that so just kind of doing as always the little paint by numbers here to show you what it looks like to start and then i'll paint this off camera so that i can actually see and not try and do it through the review finder and i'll show you what it looks like when we're all cleaned up also so that you guys see it and understand where I'm going to put it. The Rhinox hide is just going to go right there. I'll tidy that up too. And actually, I lied. And right there. I'm going to put that on the wood of the handle. I'll be right back, guys. There we go. We now have the Steel Legion Drab and the Rhinox hide <clears throat> that I've now added. We've added our fur and the wood grain to our orc. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Orc. Sorry guys, my brain shut down, couldn't remember. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to use our null oil. And this, we're going to anything that we've just painted now. So the black, or the, the silver will get it. The two, or the three browns will get it. So you're just going to want to go through, paint everything, making sure that you don't get any weird pooling spots along the way. And that's that. I'm going to go paint everything in, in a black shade, and I'll be right back. There we go. We now got everything inked black as I say that. Um, I have to steal my ink back from my uh, assistant who's trying to paint something of her own. I realize I forgot to uh, ink his leather straps here. There we go. That is all we need to do. Like I said, now we have our tire model inked black. So the last color that we're going to use is our Warplock Bronze. And if you follow the steps that I will provide, this will get it into a, hop, a coppery color. If not, you'll just have a nice bronzy color. So we're going to paint pretty much everything else that is gray on him. So we got here, we got here, we got there, 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 you know, pretty much everywhere that's gray. So I'm going to go and get that all cleaned up, and I'll be right back and show you what it looks like. There we go. We now have our Warplock Bronze added to him, and that has really darkened down the miniature. Um, of course, we're not done. Uh, we're going to darken him up some more. And I'm going to use my Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to go over all of the uh, bronze that we just did. And that's just going to kind of seep into the cracks and just give the uh, bronze a little bit of definition without muting it too much. And I say too much because this is a chestnut ink so it's gonna mute it just a little bit but that's not there's not much you can do about that. I mean there is you could not put this on but why would you do that? Oh yeah you could also thin it down but we're going to go through real quick. And we'll hit all the metal on 
his boots. Um, let's see, we just got to do this yet. So we'll go ahead here. Blub, 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 blub. blub. Okay. And that brings us to the end of our basing for the Orc Warrior. Now, as always, you could stop there, and I think that'll bring a very fun, interesting, exciting model to your Dungeons & Dragons table, um, or whatever you are going to use this miniature for. Hell, even your, your bookshelf that he sits upon. It'll bring a fun addition to that. However... That is not our way. So let's grab our teakless blue. What? As my assistant's looking at me because I said that name slightly wrong, kind of on purpose, kind of on accident. But we'll grab our teakless blue. Sure that our scooper brush is more or less clean and for this one make sure you got your small layer brush and you're just going to want to go over most of what you've done leave a little bit towards the edges on the muscles you're looking to get a lot of the brighter higher raised muscle area so where the uh, like the musculature like right here is a really good example you don't want to get all the way in there you just want to leave a little bit of that uh, original color showing and that shad or shade shad shade so you want to work around and remember you're going to be working where there is some wet so just be careful take your time this does this is the part of the miniature where I know a lot of you guys are probably not happy with just doing and it's a lot of because it is a uh, uh, a time-consuming process and while it is a time-consuming process I do feel that it makes that miniature that much more amazing and you really should do it but hey that's me and I'm a professional well semi-professional miniature painter um, and that's kind of what I do for a pseudo living is paint miniatures. So, of course, I think you should do it. But if you can't do it or don't want to do it, um, as I said, stop where I showed you. And that would be a good place to stop. Just kind of want to do lines on his fingers here. And I grabbed, of course, my crappy brush this morning instead of one of my better ones, and I'm really beginning to regret it. But you can kind of see what we're doing here. We want to we want to highlight the areas, but we don't want to lose the definition that the shade has created. Um, so let me see if I can show you one more here, and then I will go off camera and I will tidy this all up, and I will show you how awesome this guy looks in a minute. So I will be right back. There we go. We now have our techless blue added. Um, it has brought a bright, bright shine to there, and as you can see, if I can cover up most of the... Uh, sunshine here in the background you can see how much definition it's done as you uh, if you leave some of the muscular or, or the ink ink and darker color into the musc muscles 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 i don't know musculature um the next step would be to use lothern blue and this one you want to do very mild subtle highlights um like i'm gonna probably edge highlight here on his lip because that'll be very bright um, up here on his knuckles, you just want to, to me, I want to hit just the tops of his knuckles to kind of show that. Um, let's see what happens if we do this here. And we're just looking to, wherever the light would be shining on him, that would be where we want the most. So I think we'll kind of... 
put a thin coat up here. And probably right, right about here, actually. And you're looking to just kind of add just enough so that when you're looking in the light, like as you guys look in a light filter, you can't really see. Um, but if I bring it in and cover that all up, you definitely can see that color tone right there. But with the light shining on, you can't. And as I've always shown you guys before, if you look, you're going to be looking at about this distance at your miniature, typically. So, you're just trying to add a little bit of brightness to this and just a, a nice variation. Uh, I think a little bit into his back would be good. Um, like I said, the knuckles up here, in fact, I think we're going to change that. We're going to bring that down. So that we can do something like that. Um, very mild, we'll put it just, we'll bring that, his, his forehead forward. Somebody important wants to talk to me as my phone is vibrating in the background. And we'll just kind of very mildly go that way. Just hit both of his pectorals. Orcman boobs, I guess, be what they would be. Maybe that's what they'd call it. Orcman boob! Well, it wouldn't be man, would it? Because man are human! Orc, orc, orc boob! <laughs> Probably just orc boob! I don't know why we're getting into this discussion slash argument. Um, it is important. very weird in the morning when you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and the first thing you do is have coffee and then you film a painting video for YouTube. It, just weird. So, I think we're actually just going to kind of bring up the musculature on the front and back here. I really don't know what I'm doing. Actually, I do. Well, sort of. A little bit of both. A little, little bit of both. I'm just trying to brighten him up, and I think we're going to make this almost like an Ice World Goblin, or Orc Goblin. So we want to bring up this blue skin. And there you go. I think that looks pretty freaking cool. Um, let's bring this around. So there we go. That takes care of our blue. And even there, that would be another great step to stop at and make your guy look freaking amazing. However, I think we're going to touch up the silver. And with that, we need our iron breaker. We need just a little bit of that on our palette because we're not going to use a whole heck of a lot. i um, going to go through... And we're going to just kind of brighten up this chainmail a little bit. Um, kind of give an edge highlight to these pieces here. Do an edge up on the top of this thing here. If somebody knows what this is, put it in the comments down below and let me know. I'm not really an armor guy. chunk on the back of his armor there. Mm. We're just going to kind of almost dry brush this on without dry brushing it. And you're just looking to kind of pick up a lot of the chains versus uh, while leaving the ink in the bottom be or down below. So I'm just going to tidy this all up and I'll be right back. There we go, we now have our highlight of our metal on, or of our uh, uh, silver on, our iron breaker. 
again you're just kind of going through and you're wanting to pick out some of the chains so that it, it makes the chains bright but the linking underneath looks a little darker oops you want to not do what I just did and kind of clog up your details but there you go so the next step is to uh, go brass scorpion and we're gonna go over most of our shield we're gonna start bringing up this brass bronze tone I think actually I looked at the color scheme we're doing is brass which I like it's a good it's a very good contrast today so we're just gonna paint all around the shield we'll leave real dark those real dark spikes um, so get this we we'll get all our shields and you're gonna just kind of do that all the way around anywhere that the copper was or the the warp block bronze was we're gonna kind of paint it up and brighten it up so we get a nice brassy tone bronzy tone bronze I keep saying brass we're not going for brass we're going for bronze so smooth even coverage on here and highlight that and highlight that so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna tidy that all up and I'll be right back show you what that looks like there we go we now have our uh, most of our bronze done brass bronze bronze I believe we're doing I forget again uh, the color palette that we're using, uh, Warplock Bronze, uh, Brass Scorpion. I think we're doing brass. There's a lot of brass colors. And Rune, Rune Lord Brass. So the final one we got for you today is a Rune Lord Brass. And with that, we're going to do an edge highlighting. And an edge highlighting um, is literally, you're just hitting the edge. You're just trying to get a little bit of that sheen on there. So I'm going to go around. As you hear my phone in the background vibrating. Whoop. I'm going to actually hit just the tips of the spikes here. And I'm just wanting that to be shining through. Another good spot is his pauldrons here. Do this nice sharp edge that's right here. Edge highlighting is normally that is what it is. You're highlighting the edges of the model of of parts of the model. Um, so you're just looking for uh, where light would gleam or glean. I don't know if it's glean gleam. Shine would probably be a better word for me to use. Uh, you know, painting the tips of your spikes is probably good. <sighs> Let's see, what else can we point that out? Get yourself a fine line here. There we go. I'm just kind of hit the spikes here. Just give a little bit more of a a toe cap shine. It's not so much an edge highlight, but more of a toe cap highlight, I guess. And there we go. That's pretty much it. Don't need a lot to uh, brighten this guy up. And that is it. I think I like the base the way it is. So let's see if I can, I don't know, adjust my camera so it doesn't look like butt all the time. And there we go. There is... Our Orc Warrior, the Reaper Bones miniature, done in an icy blue format instead of 
the standard green skin. I just don't like, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of orcs always being green. I want it to be something fancy, something different. And there you go. If you like this miniature, give me a thumbs up down below. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, apparently, I found out you should hit the bell button if you want to continue to find out about all of these miniature or videos that are going through. Make sure you also press all notifications versus occasional. Yep, there you go. As you hear in the background, press all notifications instead of the occasional. Um, I release a new video regarding to painting every week, every Monday at 3 p.m. Um, if you are following along in our series, let's bring this guy down with his miniature family that we have. So we have Kawasha was last week. This week is uh, an orc. Next week, we'll pick one of the two uh, werewolves and we will paint them. And I'll guarantee you, I will show you two different color schemes throughout the next two weeks on these two werewolves. Um... My assistant has finished painting her miniature. If you guys remember from a few weeks ago, this one was done in that sub-assembly format. And so she was able to get into places where the arms are, more importantly like the vials there, and she has finished painting that. So that is going to be added to her uh, army. Um, showing you guys before what a sub-assembly looks like in the process of this is something I am working on for somebody else it is a zombie hill giant and that's this is exactly what a sub assembly is it is meant so that I can get into pieces and places but when I'm done I can take this off glue that head in there and now we have what looks to be like a zombie Hulk and it kind of is um, but there you guys can see kind of the process that it's going through. Um, and if you are still not comfortable painting and you need some stuff painted, follow my link down below in the description down below. And you can contact me through Facebook at the Warhammer Painting Panda, or actually Warhammer Painting Panda, and it is Facebook.com Warhammer PP. And we can work together and I will... Uh, you can commission me out to do slave labor for you. I mean, painting for you. Um, this has been another Jaffo Paints video. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.